Welcome back fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continued playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice. Okay, um, this was meant to be, and I think still shall be, the start of the invasion uh, or the war with Turkey. But I also noticed um, this. Italy invaded Wales. And it looks like they're, at the moment, look like they're going to get into Abbeysworth to get a port, even. Wow, I mean, I think that's was where they aimed for, and they ended up on either side of it. And it's a, it looks like a, um, maybe 14 divisions there, maybe. Um, like 12 divisions there, maybe, or something. Um, yeah. Now, I'm in no place to come in and support it with any ground forces. I sort of kind of think it's doomed. Um, but what I have done is set up a, um, an Adler Tog, um, Eagle Day. Um, a lot of my bombers are coming from various places left over here. I'm set up some fighters to actually um, now intercept over Britain where I've normally kept them not and moved other fighters are currently rebasing up to here to try to be ready to escort bomber missions because I'm going to try to bomb some of these units here to see what we can do with that well, yeah there's probably also a big stack of American interceptors there that may be a problem got those got those 18 units but they're sort of messed up a bit so yeah we've got that going and we've got our turkey day as well day for turkey okay so let's start this i think this will be a good time to do it yes they've moved for some reason they almost got in there but they're now um needs less than 25 Fight to set faction, they're currently at 200, their alignment is, so. It is like, not going to happen, as in a diplomatic way. So we're going to invade them. So let's, yeah, declare war. Declare war, and we're going to puppet them. Um, install loyal government, as opposed to try to own them. You um, know, all the land directly. Now, I didn't move all of my air force over to Britain. Left the units that were around here, but uh, I'm looking for um, a few of the. fighters that I think are around here. None of those are mine. Maybe I don't have as many as I thought. Oh, I do have a few more over here. I know what Turkey's Air Force is like. Both in numbers and in quality. And I'm not bombing anything anywhere really yet until we get into the fighting and we see that we need to. I got bombers ready. He doesn't have any support units, he has minor support units, so. I'm just going to come down this way so we're attacking from... I just think there might be... Um, more units in Istanbul itself from the short direction. We're going to have to attack some units a little bit. Um, 
Okay, yeah, that's all right. Look at the terrain here. Now let's move here to here down to Izmir. We'll send you into the mountains there. There we go. Now, Rangel, who probably should have been promoted, but hasn't been. You just support the attack. Oh, we need to be attached to a headquarters. Yeah, that'll work. Into the mountains and get across the river. Right into the hills. Into the hills. Into the hills. Into the hills there. The mountains, I should say. on another mountain division in the mountains. On Thoma's group, yeah, we'll start across the river and move in deeper there. HQ to attach them to. There we go.
deep in there. There we go. Well, they got a lot of forces down here on the Syrian border, but oh well. Not so good for them. Okay, Hedgehog Advance, that is the anti-submarine device. Yes, I do know we need to do this, so... Okay, so we've won there against partisans, there against partisans, and there. Okay, and air superiority tactics have advanced. Well, good. Let's go over the interception tactics. Keep improving that. Okay, um, well, this is the right order. Um,. The Fuhrer orders stop to development of the MKB program. He doesn't want to waste resources upon unproven weapons and prefers long-range rifles like the Gewehr 41 for his troops. Okay, um, let's see, you know, as, of course, Hitler was, um, liked super weapons of, you know, V-1 rockets and uber artillery pieces that are hugely costly and not very effective um, but he didn't like this program so he puts a stop to it and um, we actually lose some small arms um, or some assault rifle thing but we've already got it so I don't think we'll, we actually lose it um, I just want to check and make sure, yeah, because once we researched it, this really doesn't matter. But um, this is the historical dates, and this is your bonuses for this if you haven't done any research into it. We did, so we pushed, it was mostly done, so we pushed through. Okay, Hitler ordered that only existing types should be developed and manufactured. Um, the machine carbon air was not on the list. Um, to avoid this nuisance, the Hares Waffen Amt decided to simply rename the MKB to the MP, or machine pistol submachine gun, which was on the approved list. So the new and improved weapon received the designation MP43 and went into limited production and field trials at the front. During the following year, the MP43 experienced several minor uh, modifications leading to the MP43-1 and the MP43-2 designations. But these differed only in details such as um, front sights and grenade launching interfaces up there. Okay, so um, this is a um, 
shall we say, a common sort of theme to some degree um, within National Socialist regime. Not always dealing with Hitler, but sometimes dealing with Hitler. Um, uh, Guderian, um, after being basically fired from any frontline combat jobs, was made Inspector of Tank Forces, and under that um, designation, he was put in charge of all tank production, you know, to make the decisions. Not, you know, who screws in what bolt where, but just, you know, how many and what types we'll keep in production, and he was given um, command of that. And, um, so which, and, um, Guderian wanted to rationalize um, production and stop some of the research into unnecessary tank development. One thing, um, I think a bit more like in 42, but you, you've all heard of the Panzer I tank. Well, you know, Panzer I tank sort of has a little bit of a problem in that, um, like a, um, almost any sort of tank, proper tank, can penetrate its armor. But definitely something like a T-34 could penetrate its armor. So they, they being a particular design company under some sort of approval level of the German armed forces, approved making a um, improved Panzer I tank that had super thick armor that would... Um, Oh, I'm not exactly sure of what it would stop. Probably not a probably the the early models of the 76 millimeter gun on the T-34, or at least um, you know the the 47 millimeter gun on the Salma French tank. It was a thick armored Panzer one. So so imagine you know um, imagine this uh, basically the same size as the tank. Same basic track layout, I think. I'd have to look at the pictures again. And still the two machine guns, dual machine guns there. And it's now, I don't know if it has an upgraded engine or not. I would presume so, but I don't know right offhand. But it's now a lot thicker armor, so it's not going to be very maneuverable. Now, keep in mind that the Panzer I was designed and approved, approved of as being purely a training tank. Guderian... Um, again, one of the basic founding elements of German tank school and of thought didn't want, you know, wanted the Panzer III as the basic tank with a 50 millimeter gun. These other earlier, the Panzer I and Panzer II, was just to get out, get a training vehicle out, and get them out there and train with them, you know, and experiment with them and figure out how to do tank warfare with them and all that. And all that's really cool with, with Guderian. But the idea that, well, since the Panzer I is deficient in, in its um, tank armor, we've got to up armor it. As opposed to simply stopping production of it and producing Panzer III's. You know, and so who needs a, a uber tankette, meaning a, a, a super tankette that just has two machine guns on it? That's just ridiculous. It's not even... You know, and I think they were thinking, oh, well, and, and which had been starting to use um, as the Panzer I and Panzer II as a reconnaissance tank. And it works for that. If you've got a bunch of them, you drive them around, you look for the enemy, you report where the enemy is. But you don't keep building the damn things. And if, even if you want to keep building a light um, reconnaissance tank, fine, build the Panzer II. But you don't up armor a Panzer I. And they were doing other ridiculous um, development projects like this going on. Um, throughout, um, you know, the, during the war. And they weren't all ordered by Hitler. It wasn't all of Hitler's bad decisions. I mean, he made plenty of them, and this this is one of them um, we're dealing with here. But, so, when Guderian orders stop of development of some of the, and I think even production, but definitely development of some of the heavy um, tank models that were then being developed. 
the I don't know whether it was Ferdinand Porsche I forget or some other guy comes up um, well it, it says here that Guderian is just in charge of tank production but that doesn't include heavy tank produ production mein Führer it doesn't say heavy tank production it just says tank production and so whoever this person was and again I forget exactly the details if somebody wants to look it up and whatever they can um, and so the Fuhrer being the Fuhrer is he, yes yes you're right whoever the, the other person with clout and not Speer. Speer was um, in league, if you will, with Guderian on this. Yes, yes, you you can keep developing your 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 heavy tanks. I think part of also the reason is is Hitler liked heavy artillery, heavy tanks, big stuff, and that's what he saw as war winning. Um, and I think that to a point comes from his his view of the World War One trenches, the idea of big massive vehicles rolling towards you as a German soldier in World War One is like very scary. So he figures that this is a big scary thing that would do good in um, fighting battles. So th this is an often a, a thing that that either a company is, you know, or a um, design bureau or whatever is redesignating something to get around um, orders to stop or orders to. Um, you know, change production. Okay, so we can um, change the name to the MP43. Lose some supplies and gain some assault rifle, which won't matter to us. We can stand up to the Fuhrer and demand keep production, which will push assault rifle. Now, obviously, we have it, so we don't want to do this because we gain two in descent and lose three unity in a sort of political fight. That's sort of overdone, I think, maybe a bit, but still, I don't really think it would have been that bad. Or stop doing this. We're just going to do this because I can afford 300 supplies. And um, I want to see the next... Um, there will be a further um, event based on this, just to sort of show off my work. But you can obviously, if you are at that point... You can decide to not um, attack. Okay, I'm going to let some of this air power get organized up here a little bit. These units here that just moved up. Oh, you mean Constantinople is not even... Um, garrison? <laughs> oh no, there may be a garrison there. But it won't last long. instead of moving to protect themselves. How stupid. Okay, well. Now, we need to take a quick look. Okay, I think by... Now that we've taken this worth of five, we take that of one and that of two, and we will probably spend this. So, of course, we're also having that attack down there. Terrain like here. Okay, this is more open path. temporarily we're giving this that territory to 
Bulgaria. I think once we win, it'll be puppet controlled. Uh, have we started our invasion? Ooh, we have actually concluded our invasion down here. And they're going to go down here and pick reinforcements. These guys. Now, um, let's send the motorized forces this way. And we're going to send you up this way. And we're going to come out of, um, oh, yeah. uh, Bordeaux. There we go. Oh, and I'm also building um, Panzer Grenadier um, battalions, even though it says regiment there. There are the battalions and um, recon or armored car battalions uh, to go with those um, heavy armored brigades. Obviously, they won't be ready for the invasion of. Turkey, but someday we'll have um, heavier, not quite divisions, but um, sort of heavier, better brigades with proper infantry support. We still got America to take on. I'm still thinking that we're gonna go there. Okay, how are we doing up here? Looks like they're going after there, and I. Animal Corps. Hmm. Oh, now they're starting to move. Okay. Air intercept over here. Let's put you up as well. Probably get all shot up, but let's. Uh, since the AI has done something sort of kind of useful, maybe not supremely useful, but sort of kind of at least. goes into bomb. Uh, we'll see about waiting if that division actually gets there. The key obviously is to get supplies into these pockets. Division moving forward.
to keep moving forward. How we're doing here? Okay, well, that part of some mass is mostly done, and you can come back to here. We'll get your infantry improvement there at some point. No, okay, self propeller artillery brigade advance, great. That is good and is grayed out. Um, yeah. And Frunsberg. Or however I'm butchering it. This is sort of the. Um. Brother Division to, as it says here, the Hohenstaufen. Uh, the 10th SS Panzer Grenadier Division, Frunsberg, was formed in 1943 along with its sister division, the 9th SS Panzer Grenadier Division, Hohenstaufen, named for the 16th century German Langschknecht commander um, George von Frunsberg. The division first made its mark fighting in Normandy along with Hohenstaufen, um, with which it made up the 2nd SS Panzer Corps. In late 44, the Frunsberg was based around the Dutch town of Nijmegen during the ill-fated Operation Market Garden and did much uh, to stem the Allied advance. Perhaps Frunsberg's most famous personality was hidden until very recently. The left-wing author Gunter Gra um, Grass, who was conscripted as a 17-year-old in late 44. Okay. That's interesting. Right offhand, I don't quite know who he was. Gunter Grass. Maybe I would recognize some of his works, so I don't know. I think that's in the production queue. Yep, move it to the top. Oh, we need to adjust some of this, and this, and that a little bit. And let's also cut that down to just a little over needs. There we go. Are they back yet? Yes, they're back. That means we can move. Yeah, man. Yeah, I just, I have those for um, landing craft, but I figure if I try to move stuff into Britain with them without any good supporting um, ships, I just get way chewed up. And um, my other fleet is is it still in the Mediterranean? I thought I sent them out. I guess they're still here. Um, okay, well they should be. Well, I could try to put them into. No, nah, I just don't. Just don't want to risk it. Much more willing oh, to risk um, some aircraft, but I got von Pilfston. You're in charge of that, the 4th Brandenburger Regiment there. Yeah, um, okay, so. You, yeah, right in the right. Get 
they're still forming up way too much. Um, especially for having... Some headquarters. Oh, okay. That'll take too long to get there. We're gonna send these guys off down to here. Yeah, the Gross Zeppelin, if we were to combine that with the John Harris, Nizen now, and Admiral Hipper. That could make a a decent fleet, but I'd have to combine, get all those combined, and get everything ready. I got the units, of various types, including um, Liebstandart and Totenkopf here to go in. But I'm definitely not sending them in, in unless there's a good port. They're just not getting any supplies. Let's try to get you to get that province. Okay, fire control systems have advanced for our um, light vessels, I believe. Okay, and it's grayed out. Light anti-aircraft armament has advanced. That's in cruisers. We go with heavy now. 143 to keep that developing, and they decided to have a an outbreak of partisanism. Got, we haven't done the heavy, but well, we're not doing a lot of heavy anyway, so Yeah, we want to do that Armored car designs Okay, so well, They ran out of movement because they ran out of supplies Okay, what train are we looking at? Okay your motorized, so you're gonna go quick. Plunge deep in there. Your Panzer. Do we have any in particular victory just down there? So provinces. Let's get across the river. Come on, Blue Division, get moving.
Plus there's support ground crew training. Well, that's good. Um, well, now that we're 40, let's move over to here. These guys are getting a workout here, fighting these training unit. Oh, I thought you were going to deliver those guys there. Was that because this is sort of the screwed up port thingy? That could be. Okay, well. That's the case. Can you invade there? So marine batteries have advanced, well good. And we're going to shift that bit of research over to coastal submarines, which I still find useful. And we're shifting research around, we'll, or production around a little bit more. Well, they got that. Well, they need to keep moving. Soviet Union, we give them money for rare materials. Um, declined that at the moment. That's because we're no longer getting a bunch from Japan. Well, we're going to end the episode here. I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank you for liking the videos. I really do appreciate that. And if you can, of course, please um, subscribe to the channel. That would be great. And the big thing, of course, is please post questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, corrections. Love hearing from you. See you next time for more Arts of Iron.